to hear this news. Woo! Well, facing the most critical days of his 50-year political career, a defiant and motivated President Biden railed against a fast-growing number of Democrats and allies calling for him to drop out of the race. Some of them reportedly wanted him out by this Friday. They had a day in mind. Biden fired off a letter to Democrats in Congress this morning uh -oh. saying he will stay in the race until the end. He then came out Woo! swinging. He actually called into MSNBC, called on his phone, and oh announced the cause live, saying that the voters are behind him. I'm more than a I'm going to be the Democratic nominee. The bottom line here is that we're not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I wouldn't be running if I didn't absolutely believe that I am the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in 2024. The president even dared his Democratic critics who want him out to challenge him at the August convention. Uh-oh. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. But then of these guys yeah. don't think I should let them run against me. Go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me at the convention. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany. Here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox News contributor Lisa Booth. Woo! Fox News contributor and the Federalist Editor-in-Chief, Molly Let's Hemingway. Go, guys! And former Army Intelligence Captain and Veterans on Duty Chairman, Jeremy Hunt. Well, this hour, Emily, in fact, at any moment, we're going to take remarks from the First Lady, Jill Biden. She's in Wilmington, North Carolina. She was shouted at by reporters. She's about to speak. You're looking at this live. Reporters shouted at her. They said, is Biden staying in the race? To which she did not answer. I think she's speaking now. Let's listen live. Carolina, you have shown me your heart, and I thank you so much. She's talking, but Biden's not. First Lady Jill Biden there in Wilmington, North Carolina. As Molly Hemingway pointed out, we believe she said Delaware. I know they're used to being in Delaware, but this is indeed North Carolina, and this is before she goes to Tampa, Florida, and hits another city on support of her husband, the president, who doubled down and said he is staying in in no uncertain terms. You know, Emily, this is clearly a part of the strategy. She's one of his top surrogates. She is out there, and she's also, according to all the reporting, privately saying, we're not getting out of this, Jill. Right, and prior reports before the disastrous debate, before the follow-up interview with ABC, were noting how much more robust her campaigning was than President Biden himself, number one. And number two, there had, in fact, been expose articles essentially saying, look, she's the driving force. Critics arguing that there was a refusal to sort of relinquish power in that way. But now, on the heels of the things that I just cited, those two events in particular, then it sort of smacks of an interesting uh, lack of awareness of 
what's going on. We wonder if she's going to address it, to your point earlier, when asked, well, she didn't reply. At the end of the day, the question remains, well, we've sort of been in an emperor's new clothes position this whole time. Now there's a growing groundswell of Democrats who clearly feel safe calling for the president to step aside and having a new candidate. Well, there's not been any reply formally yet from Dr. Jill Biden, which it seems perhaps that she is the one at the helm. Lisa, all of this intended to put pressure on congressional Democrats. There's the letter that went out from Biden this yeah. morning. There's the call into Morning Joe. Jill Biden, these images out on the trail. Notably, as House members return to the Hill, will be chased down by reporters to ask, should Joe stay in the race? Yeah, and this letter to Congress is smart because clearly he's trying to get ahead of members of Congress reconvening after recess. There was that report that Senator Warner was trying to coalesce Senate Democrats and potentially trying to push Joe Biden out of the race. Now that is over, allegedly, at least reportedly. Uh, so it looks like absent an act of God, Joe Biden is in this thing. I mean, this letter to his his party basically says, go pound sand. Yeah. I'm the presumptive nominee. He says I've gotten 14 million of the votes, 3,900 delegates. Uh, he, he talks about how 87% of the delegates have already been cast for him. I'm your presumptive nominee. And then the options to try to force him out just aren't there. I mean, the 25th Amendment is nonsensical. Impeachment's not going to happen. And then any sort of political process with a brokered convention is very, very messy and also likely isn't going to happen. So, you know, good luck, Democrats. This is, you know, you, you get what you asked for, I guess. Good luck yeah. with Joe Biden. Well, you know, we have a lot of breaking news this hour. You're looking at part of it. And there's no one better to speak with today than former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Kevin Speaker McCarthy, McCarthy, I thought of Whoa. you immediately this morning. You have led a delegation. You have represented Republicans. And I read in Political Playbook, part of the job when you're in leadership is to make tough decisions and to listen to your members. And I immediately thought about Hakeem Jeffries, someone we haven't heard from. He was on a two-hour call yesterday. Some of his members said it's time for Joe Biden to step aside. What do you predict Hakeem Jeffries, House Minority Leader, does in this moment? Hakeem hates to make a decision. He'll never make a fast decision. He's doing exactly what he normally does, nothing. You know, there's two types of leaders. You're either a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermostat can tell you the temperature and change it. Hakeem's a thermometer. He sits and lets the caucus decide where to go. And that's why you're seeing it on the House. A lot of members come out against Biden. And in the Senate, you really don't have much. Not strong leadership. And he'll let the caucus get in front of him instead of stepping in front. That's why you see Joe Biden going out early before the members coming back into Congress and stating he's in this race. And I think yeah. his interview with Stephanopoulos, the two Two big questions that I take are really directly to Democrats. The only way I'm getting out of this race is God Almighty tells me to, and I don't care if I lose because I think I gave it my very best. Yeah. And you're seeing Jill out there. She's a hard campaigner. I will tell you it's much different of why I know that they're going to stay in this race. Jill doesn't want to leave either. Many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. Interesting. Wait, so why? the First Lady was in some of your meetings about policy? Many times Jill would come wow. in. There was one time when I'd sit there and, and the president said something on the, in this famous tour down to the pool saying, do you want to go, do you want to go outside? Jill turns very quickly when he hears that, when she hears that and says, no, they don't want to go outside because she knew exactly what position he was in and what he was doing. And then he just turns around. You don't want to go outside? And then let us outside. Many times, I don't think she's there for policy. I think she's there to give him comfort and direct the meetings. That's stunning. That's stunning. I, I cannot imagine <laughs> First Lady Melania Trump on a policy meeting. I, I never once saw that well, happen. But what you said echoes reporting never. from New York Magazine that, that Jill led him in front of a donor, literally coaching him with what to say, how to speak. She's running the show. Now the Look, I've been out. talking about this for more than a year. I've watched his decline. Every meeting I've had with this president has been different, and they would attack me because of it. This is a pattern of behavior you watched with the Hunter, Hunter Biden laptop. I expect President Biden to call Secretary of State Blinken to go get 51 physicians to sign a letter that says he's cognitively fine and put that out, and then go after the media to say, don't you can't print about this. I mean, the real question here is this is becoming their Watergate. Who knew it, and when did they know it, and what did they do? I mean, if you think of the vice president, she was one of the most fierce attacks against us whenever we brought this up. So did she not know this was going on? That would disqualify her to become president if she couldn't figure out this was happening. And then it would also disqualify her to be the nominee if she did and wouldn't share with the American public. 
You know, you, you mentioned this is their Watergate. I, I think you could be right on that. So the question becomes, what do Republicans do? Should there be a select committee into Biden's mental health the way there was one into January 6th? What does Congress do? What do Republicans do today? Well, the thing I do, I wouldn't play politics with it. Let's be very sensitive about how we go about doing this. If I was President Trump, do exactly what he is doing. And at any given time, you see, he is better prepared to be president than at any other time. He's disciplined. He's focused on the issues. Secure this border. Curve inflation. Make America strong again of where we're going. It's stick on the issues. But... For Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate, this is a serious position that you have a president this week. You have NATO coming in. Why do we have war in Ukraine? Did Putin pick up on this when he met with Biden? Did Biden make those wrong decisions in Afghanistan because of this situation? We do need, and the American public has a right to know. So this is a place that you shouldn't make it partisan, but Republicans and Democrats should bound together to get to the answers. The American yeah. public deserve to know the answers to these questions. Indeed they do, especially because every hostile service death in Afghanistan and Jordan took place outside of the hours in which Biden is dependably engaged. That's per Axios. Thank you so much, Speaker McCarthy.